One of the biggest challenges that someone who's looking to buy a power station or someone that already has a power station is trying to know just how big of a power station they need in order to run something or perhaps how many batteries they need. And this also applies for those building off-grid systems for the first time and they're looking to build an off-grid system but they don't really know how big of a system to build, how many batteries they have to buy, if they're gonna run an inverter, how big of an inverter, and all that kind of stuff. And today, I'm going to show you the one thing that will help you determine that and give you all the answers you actually need. So let me first tell you about my story and how I got to where I am today so that I can pass this information on to you because honestly, I didn't just know it, I had to learn it too. When I decided to build my off-grid system for my cabin, at that time, it was just kind of a vacation cabin, a little hunting cabin, that kind of thing, something in the woods that we could retreat to. And I didn't want to spend all the money bringing in power from the utility company, which would have cost me about $40,000. And I knew that I could build my own off-grid power system for a heck of a lot less than that and power everything that I needed to power. And I was told back then about this little tool I'm gonna to show you, but I really hadn't quite figured out how to use it. So I went around and I looked up how many watts each item that I was gonna run used, and I added them all together, figuring out how many hours a day I was gonna run them, and I did a bunch of math, and eventually I even came across a spreadsheet that I've linked to before, and I'll drop a link down below to it, that I could use to do just that. But I wasn't using that one tool that you really need to get and use yourself, which I'm gonna show you. Now, when I built my system, I actually didn't have enough batteries because I, I didn't use that tool. And I had to add more, and then I had to add even more. And eventually, I got up to 12 golf cart batteries, and that was doing the job for me. Though, frankly, those batteries just weren't like what you can have today. Today, you can get LiPo 4s, and they provide you a lot more usable power. Throughout that process, I had to learn really just how much power I was using and I finally grabbed this little tool and I started using it and it made all the difference in the world. So today, I'm gonna to show you that tool and tell you how to use it. So what is it? Well, folks, it's one of these. They're super simple to use, they're very inexpensive, and I will drop a link down below for you to grab one of them. Because honestly, if you've got one of these, it's called a watt meter, it will help you determine how much power you need to run, well, an air conditioner, a refrigerator, your stereo, just about anything that you can, well, plug into a 120 volt outlet. It'll tell you how much power it uses. Now, what I do today is I use this in two ways. First of all, I'll go ahead and I'll plug it in the wall and I'll plug the item in that I wanna use. And I'll just see how many watts it's drawing at the time I'm using it. That's number one. I want to know how many watts, whatever item it is I'm trying to run, maybe it's a refrigerator, maybe it's my little air conditioner that sits in the window at my cabin, I want to know what it uses when it's maxed out, when it's running full bore, because that's going to tell me how big of an inverter I need. Now the second way that I use one of these is when I set it up, I will zero it out. And they have a little button right here on the front that says reset. And that reset button, which they even give you a little tool to do it, allows you to set it to zero. You plug it in, you plug that component into it, maybe it's an air conditioner, and you let it run for 24 hours. It's not only gonna tell you what your overload wattage was, which is basically your peak. Now I have seen these generally only go to about 3,860 watts on overload. So that's telling you it's using at least that much power when they start but it will also tell you your low wattage and your high wattage. And that's important because that way you know that when your unit's running at maybe an idle, how much power it's going to consume at idle, maybe it's 50 watts or something like that. And it'll tell you what your high wattage is when it's running. So for example, my air conditioning unit was using about 975 watts when it was running full time. The other thing they're gonna tell you is how many watt hours you use over a specified period of time. So let's say, for example, you want to know how much power your refrigerator uses for 24 hours. You would plug this into the wall, zero it out using the reset button, then plug your refrigerator into it and turn it on. Then you'd let it run for 24 hours, and then all you have to do is cycle through the function on this to get to the kilowatt hours, and it will show you in kilowatt hours. 
So for example, when I ran my air conditioning unit in the energy savings mode for eight hours, it told me that I used just over one kilowatt hour in that eight hour period. And that was keeping my cabin at 72 degrees on a 95 degree day. So now I know that to run my air conditioner for eight hours, I only need one kilowatt hour of battery power to run that air conditioning unit for that period of time. So with that information, you now know how many watts your unit will use at its highest amount, what it will peak at, or at least you'll know that it will peak at something above that 3,860 if it goes that high. You'll also know what its idle consumption is, and this will tell you how much power you're using over that specific period of time, whether it's 24 hours or just two hours. So if you're trying to figure out how big of a power station to buy, or how many batteries you need either to extend the life of that power station or for your own do-it-yourself power build, you can use one of these to give you that information. Now obviously if you use say a thousand watt hours or one kilowatt hour over that 24 hour period, it's a good idea to have more than that. And normally what we do in the off-grid world is we build our systems to have three to five days of autonomy. That means three to five days when we're really not getting any solar production. If I were to do that, I would need at least three kilowatt hours to make sure that if I didn't have any solar production, I could run whatever it was I was trying to run for three consecutive days without much in the way of solar power. At that point, I could use a generator or maybe hopefully the sun comes out and charges my battery bank back up. But that's it, folks. That's all you need. One of these little watt meters that are, I think, under $30 on Amazon. I'll drop a link down below for them. And it will give you all the information that you need to determine how much power you need and how big of a power station you need in order to run that item. But what if I have multiple items that I'm trying to run on my power station? Well, again, this is the tool that's going to help you with that. And you only need one of them. What you would do is you would run, for example, your refrigerator on this for 24 hours, write down the numbers that you get, reset it, and plug something else into it. Maybe you run a microwave or a toaster and you want to be able to run that off your power station. So you plug this in, you reset it, you plug that microwave or toaster into it, and you let it run for however long you're going to run. Maybe you just want to know for 24 hours what I use. This will do it. Even if you're not running that microwave, other than a few minutes here and there, it's still drawing some power, idle power, if you will. So this is going to tell you how much power that uses. So if you do that on a 24 hour period, if you're trying to figure out a full system, every 24 hours you change this to something else you're going to run. And by the time you've measured all those devices, you can add up the total consumption power that each one used, and that will give you your total of how much power you need to run for one 24 hour period. Now in a future video, I will cover how much solar you will need to get that power station or do it yourself off grid system, or even just external batteries to the power station, how much solar you will need to get those charged back up within that peak solar window so that you're always keeping them fully charged, especially for overnight when you have no solar. Because that's really the biggest challenge for most people. How much solar do I need to keep my system up and running overnight before the sun comes back up again? So look for that in the future. And that's it, folks. Super simple, super easy, super cheap. Get one of these. They're worth it. I want to take a moment to thank my members for supporting the channel. It really helps me out. Thank you so much for that. It's greatly appreciated. Meanwhile, I'll throw another video just for you over here to check out. Thanks for watching, folks. Y'all have a great day. The old jar hit out.